Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission here is to seek God and serve others. Thank you for letting us into your home and for joining in this worship experience. I hope that you feel the love of God today and in the days ahead. Know that others also feel the love of God when you share this video using your social media platforms. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds to experience God's abiding presence in worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in, in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 17, beginning at verse 22. Paul stood in front of the Oropagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city, and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. 
From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that the world, they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and would find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by the raising of him from the dead. Word of God, word of life. A reading from 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins, once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God 
for the good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. It's, I'd like to say it's great to see you, but we don't see you, and I, and I miss that. I love seeing your energy and your enthusiasm as you come up to the front, run up to the front and sit next to me. But I'll ask you a question. Have you ever felt alone? I know I have. My father was in the military, and we did a lot of traveling around from state to state. One time, we even flew across the ocean in a brand new thing called a jet. It was a 707. And uh, it was hard for me to make friends because we just constantly moved. And my dad was gone a lot because he had a very important job. But I remember one thing my very first Sunday school teacher taught me when I was a little kid. She said, Willie, don't forget that God is always with you. And I don't remember why, I don't know why I remember Mrs. Ross telling me that. But I remember her name, and I remember the setting. I was at a little church over on Cincinnati Avenue in San Antonio. And I remember Miss Ross just saying, Willie, don't forget you're ever alone. Because she knew that my dad was military and we'd be moving a lot. And she wanted to offer me that one word of comfort as I was moving. And as I've grown up and grown through a lot of stuff as an adult, that's one thing I've always remembered, that God is always with me. So it's kind of strange right now, not being able to play with your friends down the street or not be able to say hi to your cousins. But no matter where you are and as you grow up to be leaders of the church, leaders of the community, what I'd ask you to remember is that you are not alone. God loves you very much and God will always be with you. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will send you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Those who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. John's Gospel is unlike the other three Gospels, and to me sometimes it seems like it's so pastoral. I think John 3.16 is a pastoral statement more than it is a theological one. In John 17, there's this incredible prayer that Jesus prays for his disciples. And then we have today's passage from John 14. The Spirit of God will always be with you. It's, it, to me, it's reminiscent of the final words in Matthew, I will be with you always to the end of the age. So there's two questions. <clears throat> why did Jesus say it, and, and why did John bother to write it? Jesus is saying, I am sending you a paraclete. That's the Greek word. Para meaning with. Clete is someone who speaks with you or speaks on your behalf. I am calling. I am going to give you someone who will stand next to you. Jesus sang it because he knew that he was going to die and his time was limited. The religious leaders in Jerusalem were not going to listen to a rabbi from Galilee. John is telling his community because the earliest generation of disciples have died. Tradition tells us many of the earliest disciples were crucified. And now this new generation of believers in Jesus as God's son is wondering, so what do we do next? And John says, the words of Jesus are, the Spirit of God will be with you. In times of war and peace, in times of doubt and distance, God will be with you. 
A few years ago, when I was a kid in the ministry, I uh, thought I'd do a series of Lent sermons on the theology of Broadway. There is no theology of Broadway, but when I read theological books, the titles are somewhat intimidating. The paragraphs tend to be two and three pages long, and they're full of words that you have to look up every other word. And theological books are mainly written for other theologians. So I thought, what could I do to take ideas of theology and put it into stories and music that people might be a little more familiar with. So I chose Broadway because I enjoy the theater. And I can't remember all the ones I was going to choose that I chose at the time. But I remember it was Cats. Cats, a story of death resurrection, a God of second chances. Le Mis is a great story about law and gospel, one of the pillars of Lutheranism, grace and law. If I was to do it today, I think I'd do the musical Come From Away, which is a story of radical hospitality. But I definitely included <clears throat> the musical Carousel. Carousel was, was, was uh, premiered in 1945. And to put 1945 in some perspective, because most of you watching this have no idea about 1945. For 30 years, we have been in turmoil. We've, we're having a difficult time after three months. For 30 years, our country was in some stage of suffering or another. We had the Great War, which is supposed to be the war to end all wars. We came back, we had a Dust Bowl, which took away family farms. We had an economic recession, depression, which took away everything people had. There was no Social Security. There was no bank protection. If you had $100 in the bank and the bank closed, you lost everything. And then we're sending another generation to war, in World War II. And people went to the theater and they went to movies just to get a break. And in the movies, they had these uh, newsreels. And the newsreels always showed the, the great victories of the Allies and, the, and the, the battles won by our American troops. But the moms and the wives, they knew how much that battle cost because a lot of them at home had a telegraph from the War Department. I know my, my grandmother had one when my father was shot down in World War II. So that's the setting of Carousel. For 30 years, we've just been one sort of strife after another. And Carousel is a wonderful story, but the problem is that at the end of it, one of the main characters dies. And Roger and Hammerstein had to figure out, what can we do for the American people? What can we do to this play to really make it something outstanding? And they wrote something that is absolutely beautiful. It's hymn-like. For some people, it has become the unofficial uh, hymn for this time in which we live. And the tune is, you'll never walk alone. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden day and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed about, and I would change that to may your faith, sometimes our faith is tossed about. Walk on with love in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. And again, I would, I would rewrite that. Walk on with the, the Spirit of God in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. I don't really know who's watching this. I don't know where you are. You may be with your family celebrating life. You may be sort of locked up inside a residential facility. You may be alone. And no matter where you are, I would say to you that you are not alone. Even sometimes when we're with people, we feel alone. And the words of Jesus are our words. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? But I would say to you that God has not abandoned us, that God is with us. A couple weeks ago, I spoke on the uh, story of the Good Shepherd. And there's actually a flip side of that story that, that John left out. He meant to insert, and he just left it out. We listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd, and we don't forget that voice. But the flip side of that story is the Good Shepherd never forgets our voice. No matter how far we try to push God away or how, what life may throw at us, the Good Shepherd never forgets our voice. 
In the early 1900s, Mary Stevenson was born into a family. She was one of eight children. When she was six years old, her mother died. She was married at 16. She and her husband had a child in an abusive relationship. He went off to fight in the war, and she found refuge in a Cherokee reservation. But when he came back, he used a legal system to take their child away. Yet somehow, Mary Stevenson knew the presence of God in her life. And she wrote some absolutely beautiful words that has touched millions of people throughout the years. You may have those words hung in your house someplace. You may have it on a card. You may have it memorized. But in the midst of all the stuff she was going through, she wrote Footprints in the Sand. If you don't remember it, or if you've never heard of it, I'll summarize it for you, and I'll put her into the story. Mary and God are walking on the beach of life, and she stops, and she looks back over her life, and she sees two sets of footprints. But when times were really rough, she saw just one set of footprints. So she looks at God, and she says, when life was at its worst, there's only one set of footprints. Where were you when I needed you the most? And God said to Mary, is it those times that I carried you? You are not alone. I know that people are hurting. Social distance is a polite way for some people. It's really isolation. I saw the stories of isolation on Mother's Day when moms could not be with their kids. It's kind of a weird graduation, and there's a lot of uncertainty in our future. But I can promise you, you are not alone. This congregation, Body Presence, would love to pray for you. If somehow you could just reach out to us, no matter where you might be, we would gladly pray for you. Because what I can promise you is during this time, you are not alone. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcoming God into the sanctuaries of our homes, we join with the people of God in all times and places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, come into all the homes around the globe from which your people offer their prayer. Bless Christian leaders as they guide the church through this pandemic. Show our pastors and church councils the way forward. Grant your grace to the devout in other religions of the world and show your kindness to all who search for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and all water that gives life to your creatures. Form us into a baptized body that protects the waters on which we rely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, instill in all leaders of nations a desire for justice and a will to serve the oppressed. Guide our nation's governors in their difficult pathway between the threat of disease and the dangers of scarcity and isolation. Bring our legislators into agreement about how to assist those in need and give us all patience in facing our current predicament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, comfort all who are in need, those who carry heavy burdens, those who suffer from the coronavirus, those living in loneliness and fear, those without jobs, those who mourn their dead. For health care workers and residents in care homes, prisons, refugee camps, and for those we individually name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, support all who are working to develop tests, treatments, and vaccines. Give wisdom to all who work towards delivery systems, ensuring equitable access for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, your kingdom is here now and it has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share peace with each other. If you have the ability to text someone right now, peace be with you. Peace be with you. What a blessing to know that we are not alone and that we can feel the love of God where we are gathered in homes or hospitals or facilities, more so that we can serve others with the love of God right where we are. Your gifts enable this community of faith to spread this love in new and amazing ways. Thank you for your continued generosity.
Let us pray. Holy and generous host, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life as we use each blessing for service in your name and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we continue with the thanksgiving for the word. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.